So what is diffusion? It's the consistent emission of gas or liquid over time. We'll take a look at some of the fundamental scientific principles behind diffusion now. Diffusion is a process where a substance moves from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. If you look at the image here on the slide, you can see molecules of two different substances separated in, in different containers. When you open the valve between the containers, diffusion occurs where regions of high concentration of one molecule move into regions of lower concentration into the other molecule, creating a equilibrium. One way diffusion occurs is through vaporization. Vaporization is the transition of an element or compound from a liquid phase to a vapor phase. The two main ways this occurs is through evaporation and boiling. Evaporation refers to vaporization that occurs on the surface of a liquid where temperatures are below the boiling temperature at a given pressure. This happens when molecules in the liquid collide and there is a transfer of energy. The evaporation occurs when the molecules near the surface absorb enough energy to overcome the surface tension of the liquid and vapor pressure from the gases above it. Evaporation can be encouraged by increasing temperature of the substance increasing surface area of the substance, and increasing the flow of air above it. We'll talk about several examples later in this webinar of where evaporation occurs, one main one being um, fragrance diffusion. Boiling refers to vaporization that occurs in the bulk of the liquid when it's heated to a temperature where the vapor pressure of the liquid is equal to the pressure exerted on the liquid by the gas around it. In other words, Boiling occurs when the equilibrium vapor pressure of the substance is greater than or equal to atmospheric pressure. One factor that can influence vaporization is the volatility of the liquid. Volatility refers to how readily a substance will vaporize. And a volatile liquid is one that's described as a liquid that can vaporize under atmospheric conditions. It's important when you're designing your device to understand the liquid that you want to diffuse or the gas and, and understand the volatility so we can design the proper diffusion system. Now that you have a sense of some of the characteristics of diffusion and how it occurs, let's think about some of the different types of problems that can be solved through diffusion. If you need to release air freshener sense into a room or insecticide, this occurs through diffusion. If you need to deliver oxygen or other gases into a system, this happens through diffusion. Diffusion can also help get a liquid or gas particle moved in, 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 into a uniform distribution to aid in a manufacturing process or the creation of a formulation. It can even be used to disperse light onto a surface or to focus on a certain area. Once you understand that diffusion can help you solve the problems in your device, it's important to consider some different design aspects when designing for diffusion. At a high level, you want to understand the fluid type or volatility of the fluid that you're diffusing or diffusing into, the temperature of the liquid or the environment, the humidity or other factors in the environment, and how long you want the diffusion to occur. We'll cover these and many more details specifically related to the applications of diffusion that we'll cover in the next section of this webinar. Now we'll take a look at several applications and design considerations for diffusion. We'll dive into examples of diffusion in healthcare applications, consumer, electronics, and industrial. One example of diffusion in healthcare space is in bioprocessing spargers. In this environment, oxygen is diffused into cell cultures in bioprocessing applications to feed the cells and encourage growth. The, the diffusion relies on the pore structure of the polymer to diffuse the oxygen into the liquid environment where the cells are growing. And therefore, it's really important to consider what is being diffused. Are you diffusing gas into the, li the liquid? What rate of diffusion is required? How much gas do you need to diffuse into the liquid? What's the operating environment? The temperature of the liquid that you're diffusing into? The pressure of the gas? And what's the assembly method? How are you going to uh, assemble the sparger into the bioprocessing environment? Now we'll cover several consumer applications that you're probably familiar with. The first one being plug-in air freshener or insecticide devices. 
These devices deliver fragrance or insecticide from a bottle into the environment. This happens through diffusion. Inside the bottle, there's a liquid, in this case, fragrance or insecticide, that's actually wicked up through the porous component and then diffused into the air through, evapor through evaporation. When designing something for diffusion, such as a uh, plug-in air freshener, you need to understand what's the main carrier agent in the formula. This will help you understand the volatility of that liquid and how it will evaporate or how quickly it'll evaporate into the air. How will the wick be held into the bottle is also important because this will impact the equilibrium pressure uh, between the outside and inside of the bottle. It's important to consider what rate of delivery you want for a formula delivery. Do you want this to last 30 days, 60 days, 90 days? How much formula do you want to deliver in that amount of time? And what is the way uh, you want this wick the, or diffuse device to, to be assembled? That'll play a, a role in how we can design the device or what material to select, which we'll cover later in the webinar. Another example of evaporative diffusion is a reed diffuser. Instead of using a heater or a plug-in air freshener like the previous example, this is using a passive method of diffusing formula into the air. And this is really important to understand the volatility of the formula, so you know whether your, your bottle needs to be airtight, how you'll hold the reeds into the, to the bottle. And again, understanding what rate of delivery you want will help to define what pore structure you need, which will influence the evaporation rate. We'll talk about pore structure and how that influences evaporation and diffusion in, later in the webinar. A consumer application similar to the bioprocessing spargers are aquarium bubblers. In this case, we're delivering oxygen into an aquarium tank in a controlled manner. Here you under, want to understand what size of bubbles you want to put into the liquid, how much, at what rate you want to diffuse them in. This will impact the, exp the experience and the overall growth in your aquarium. And the pore structure of your diffused device will be designed to accomplish those delivery rates. Here it's also important to understand the operating environment, what temperature uh, do you expect the water to be, and if there are any safety features needed, and what assembly method you want to assemble your, your aquarium bubbler into the, de into the device. Are you going to ultrasonically weld it? Is it gonna be a press fit? We'll take a look at how to design for those types of assemblies a little bit later on. Diffusion solves many problems in the electronic space, one critical one being in semiconductor processing. In the semiconductor environment, you need a very high purity uh, facility and a way to diffuse gases uh, to clean and to process the semiconductor wafers. Diffus diffusion tubes are used to do just that. Here it's really important to understand what, if you're trying to filter out anything or any particles or water or contamination during the diffusion process, what in, in fact you are diffusing, are you diffusing a gas into the environment? Are you um, diffusing a liquid into, into the environment? What rate of diffusion is required? Do you need to create a distribution of diffusion? Um, perhaps you need different rates of diffusion over time. What the operating conditions will be? Are there any uh, chemicals in the environment that will impact the diffusion or the components that are being used for diffusion? And any safety features that are necessary to prevent um, contamination or injury for any workers in the environment. One final example we'll cover, although there are many more examples of diffusion, is an industrial application of fluidizing sheets. In this application, you're using an evenly distributed pore size to create uh, air distribution, which will turn a powder into a fluid-like substance. Diffusion is critical here to create a uniform uh, dispersion of the air into the powder. And it's really important to understand the pressure needed uh, to occur to, to create the fluidization, which will depend on what gas you're diffusing into the powder, what rate you want to diffuse that gas, and the environmental conditions, like the temperature in that, in that environment. Those will all impact diffusion.